Oh, when I heard that, I want to bang my head into the freaking wall, guy. Welcome back to the Sashimi Tangent Podcast, guys. Uh, this is the Friday episode, as we mentioned, in the Monday episode. <laughs> yes. Uh, I, this will be the continuation of the first one, the Monday episode, uh, I guess. Slightly, a slightly. A slight continuation, yeah. at least. Yeah. This will not be the case for every week. Yeah, it will not be a serial thing. Uh, you can definitely enter the podcast... Uh, and listen to it on your at your own on its own on its own standalone yeah on a standalone, uh, standalone, yeah. standalone podcast. Uh, right. So let's jump straight in. Yeah, because nothing happened between the past few days because um obviously this is a different outfit, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. So let's talk about that yeah. wardrobe, right? Yeah. <laughs> Before we hop into the podcast, right? I'm just gonna be wearing this hoodie every episode, and I'm probably just going to be either wearing this or a red or white hoodie, either one. Yeah, it's a very on cold room. Episode. Uh, it's not a very cold room. Uh. I for I for one have we don't really need so much hoodie in Singapore. <laughs> yeah, okay, let's just Yeah, let's just jump right. to the topic at hand right know, now. I was gonna say let's give not? them a sneak peek on why we're wearing a hoodie. It's gonna be our first merch. This is what we're gonna use to milk oh. your money for. <laughs> yes. Okay, yeah, let's jump into the What's episode? the point in hiding it? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we are gonna milk your money, guys. But yep. we're gonna make merch that's really good. Yes. You know, at least. In the event that we do well. <laughs> 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 anyway, let's jump right, yeah. right into so it. Let's today right we're going to be talking about how Singaporeans spend their money. Right. It's a very... Uh, is it debatable or controversial? Not I really. So. Yeah. I, I don't think. I think it's more of a infomercial kind of thing. Yeah, Informational, yeah. Informational, sorry. Show. Informational topic. Again, disclaimer. Um, This technically is some sort of generaliza- generalization of Singaporeans, yeah. I would say. So don't take everything into um too much. Uh, don't take everything too hard. We are spread. Uh, we are not spreading. We are giving our opinions based on what we have experienced. Uh, be- yeah. uh, uh based off our own friend circle, in that sense. Yes. So don't take things too seriously or too out of hand. I guess. Yeah. So yeah. the first topic we're gonna hop into, <laughs> since we're talking about uh expenditure, right? What's the biggest expenditure? House. Right. That's House like, I would say one, one of the, the biggest, biggest expenditure yeah. or sort of one shot payment you could say you would spend on in your lifetime. Right. For sure. Yeah. Uh, so houses, how Yeah, take it away, man. Right. Okay. Okay, okay, I will. Relax. <laughs> like calm down, man. Houses. Let's talk about uh the housing situation in Singapore. We touched a little bit on this on the Monday episode, but about eighty percent, uh this fact is uh quoted from Vincent. <laughs> Me? Yes, oh shit, now you're putting me on blast. Okay, yeah, fine. Very right? good source all of right. information. Alright, alright, fire away. Yeah, so about 80% of Singaporeans stay in uh, HDB, uh, which is... Okay. And we're going to talk a little bit about the prices of this HDB. So, like, right. uh, there are one room, two room, three, uh, four, five three rooms. rooms. Yeah, and then I think five rooms onward, they'll be called executives at, this point, at that point. Yeah, yeah, so what HDB is, is basically a government subsidized housing in Singapore. Right. And the prices of this... Okay, let's talk. Let's just talk about the average. Otherwise, we'll be going too, too in depth, right? Yeah. The average Singaporean, I would say, stay in a three to five room HDB. Yeah, if they have a family, that is. Yes, yeah. uh, I mean, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. I mean, they could be married but not have a family, so they could be have they could be staying in a two room. Yes, you know? yeah. okay. So, so the prices of this. Let's talk about the low end, like for a three room HDB. Ooh. Depending on location, I would say yeah. on average, it would cost a. About three hundred thousand SGD. I think that's a safe number, considering um, <coughs> the place, the area where I live, the HDB can at least for a new yeah, one. Those are like the prime areas. Yeah, the prime areas will cost about three rooms around six hundred and twenty thirty thousand. So I guess, uh, three hundred to four hundred is a good. Yeah, three hundred to four hundred so, is a good ballpark. So uh, I I think we forgot to touch on this in the previous episode. We we're talking about uh income levels. Oh right. Yeah, yeah, we forgot to tap so, into it slightly. Like yeah. I guess the median income in Singapore per per person. I guess we'll do per per household then. I think per household is better. It's about it's what, better, right? ten thousand a month? Eleven thousand. Yeah, think. about eleven thousand yeah. a month. I think it's month. around eleven thousand per household. So this would usually include Average a job. couple a couple in like a couple sometimes. working. So yeah. this would be the salary of two person added together. Right, yeah. So earning eleven thousand a month, how do they afford Houses that cost three hundred thousand, and by the way, when I say three room, it is tiny. So for the viewers outside of Singapore, it's about it's about a thousand five hundred square foot. No, that's too big, too dude. Big. <laughs> that's, a thousand. That's way too big, dude. Okay, to put onto perspective, um, 
my the place where I currently stay is a thousand six hundred square feet. All right, and that's a f- three plus one. Okay, so and it was built ages ago. It would be eight hundred to a thousand square foot. Yeah, I think that's a for m- three hundred thousand. I think that's a safer Sing estimate. Dollars. Yeah, yeah. How so? How do uh Singaporeans with the median income of eleven thousand a month per household afford some ho- like such expensive houses? Right. You wanna elaborate? I'm yes. not. I'm not too uh, yeah. clean on the housing market okay, at so least. How it works is for Singaporeans uh, when you're working in Singapore. The government has uh, this scheme called CPF, right. which I forgot what it stood for. Central Provident Fund. Yeah, so basically what it is, is a saving plan for every Singaporean where you cannot opt out of. So it's a compulsory thing. And how it works is uh, when you draw your salary monthly, your boss or your employer or your employer would have to deposit, I think, 20% of your income. I'm not too sure. No. Yeah, yeah. Uh, 20% in of your income into this thing called CPF. Right. Which can be, which is sort of a retirement fund as well. Yeah. But you could use this fund to purchase a house. So okay, it yeah. is sort of money that is not included in the, like your salary. Right. So you're technically earning more than 11000 a month, if you were right. to put it that way. Yeah. You, because you have quote unquote hidden contributions. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. So that's how. I think that's why. Yeah, I think that's, that's why also our are income. Able to afford such expensive houses. Right. I think it's also why our income as well, they wrote there, most of the time when we sign for work, right? When yeah. we sign the contract, they write, they will explicitly state that it's um the amount before CPF. Yes. Yeah, then there will be an amount after CPF with the um relevant deduction. I think it varies across the income groups. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, for your information, that's how yep. Singaporeans are able to afford such houses. Right. Is that it? Yeah. I mean, that's oh it. shit, okay. <laughs> I mean, okay, if we were to compare, like, the square foot of the house, Singapore is small, right? Yeah, so yeah. Uh, yeah compa- in the US, if you were to pay 300000 it would be like a huge house, depending on the area. Yeah, I mean, if, if you're... on the outskirts. Yeah, if you're on the rural areas, it'll be a it's big like a house. Beautiful yeah. house. You can get a big a house for it. cool jacuzzi, yeah. like maybe 5,000 square feet. Yeah, but if you're in NYC or in San Fran, you know, well, yeah, you'll fucking probably <laughs> like get something smaller. And probably something shittier probably than something Singapore, Probably something actually. similar. Uh, probably even Mo- shittier. Yeah. Yeah, because it's... I mean, it's the US. Yeah, it's private owned as well. Yeah, so so the quality. It really depends on where. I guess. I guess the fairer comparison would be Singapore to these states, uh, to these um cities like NYC and San Fran. Yeah, Hong Los Kong. Angeles. Yeah, it'll be a more fair comparison rather because we don't have a countryside, yeah, right? Where it's more populated. Yeah. Financial districts. If we if we did have a countryside, maybe we could make a comparison, but we don't really have one. So yeah. it's it's really an unfair comparison to just bring it up all the way to maybe Texas. <laughs> Yeah. In the middle of a farmland, yeah, <coughs> it's you know it's relativity, right? Yeah, you, you can't really compare one to one sometimes, but it is in general at least. Yeah, for three hundred thousand, you can get a really yeah. big house. So to answer again on the previous episode's topic, Singaporeans are not rich. It's just that the government is doing a pretty decent job at supporting with this scheme. Yeah, where, supporting all citizens. Yeah, as well, where yeah. they force you to have a saving. Which, from my understanding, Singapore is the only country in the world that does this. Yeah, they force you to have a retirement plan yeah. at least. Yeah. And like, okay, I'm not going to go in there because it's, uh, even I'm not fully educated on this. Yeah. That's just but this whole CPF thing helps Singapore a lot in how we grow fin- uh, economically. Mm-hmm. But yeah, let's not go into that. Yeah. We let's just not, not let's just not too dive too deep into yeah, things that we don't about really. Icons. Yeah. It's not about it's not even about econs. I guess we are just not too well versed enough yeah. yet for it. This econs though. <laughs> <laughs> Straight up. But, but yeah. yeah, and then let's just jump next right okay. straight into so it. The next segue. There's no segue at all. Yeah, there's absolutely. no segue, but okay. Yeah. Let's okay, I, I guess we forgot the uh thesis. If you or like the state I guess the uh the, our over over yeah, what overarching this topic is yeah. about, right? Right. So it's about uh, expenditures of Singaporeans and how we spend on luxuries compared to necessities. Are we buying this because it is within our means or are we doing this to, to sort of impress? impress yeah. Like living beyond our means. Right. And yep. so, That's segue into cars. Right, cars. Oh, tapped on this uh, ju- uh, uh, in the episode on Monday. Yeah. But um, car prices in Singapore as... Um, as Almost every single media outlet in the world portrays yeah. it is absolutely not cheap. Ludicrous. In no way is it cheap, all right? For the just just a side comparison, um maybe in the US you could buy a Subaru Forest not a Forester, sorry, an Impreza, all right? Um 
twenty five thousand US dollars. Yeah, uh, I'll give give a take five thousand. Yeah. Right, um, in in Singapore it's at least one hundred forty thousand <laughs> sin dollars. Yeah. Right, so that would be like the cheapest car on the market. Yeah, no, I think new. I think even the cheapest car brand new. I'm comparing Subarus directly. Yeah. So the cheapest car in Singapore will probably cost you, <coughs> oh boy, um, hundred thousand. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's the cheapest guys. Like. Like a uh, Mitsubishi Atrage. That's the cheapest car. It's a one liter car mm. with um barely enough horsepower to carry me around. Uh <laughs> and it doesn't accelerate at all. <laughs> like you can step on the gas pedal, like just just slam it down, right? It won't even move. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, it's just that that's how um exorbitant our car prices is. And I believe that um most Singaporeans who have a car, they are already technically well off. I would say I would say they're well off, but they're yeah. able to afford it. So that is something that I guess sort of touches on what this episode is about. Yeah. Are they spending beyond their means? Because a lot of people that I know, uh, who lives in government housing. Public housing. Public housing. Yeah. Uh how are they uh, able to afford BMWs? You know? Uh, okay. This I think this comes into play where um they were staying in the public housing when they had a slightly lower income. Mm-hmm. Maybe I'm. I'm just um. They're they're giving my theory out. They give my own yeah. input, right? So normally to be eligible for public housing, you have to be of a certain income bracket in the first place, right? And maybe throughout the five years that they're staying there, he got a decent sized promotion that got got him that back then maybe eight thousand a month to nine thousand. So at that rate, um, they are still eligible to stay in the public housing. Uh, and they are able to afford the car like mm-hmm. a Beamer or a, a Mercedes or yeah. any other cars actually so most of the time I would say for people who are staying in a public housing and who owns BMW <coughs> is that they do have a decently high income yeah because but when I go to these places and I see the car park it is full of BMWs right. Mercedes right then uh, again uh, it, I think it comes down to whether you believe a car is a necessity or not yeah. right obviously a BMW or Mercedes if you if you can't, if you guys can't work it out yet, um, the cheapest variant of Mitsubishi Atrage is a hundred thousand. Yeah, uh, realistically, a BMW, maybe a five series, will be significantly more expensive. Mm-hmm. I'm talking about the two hundred. No, 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 three hundred. I think is around the. Uh, sure, no, we'll just go with two to three. Yeah, we'll go. Uh, I'll give you the exact one actually for the five to three i. All right. Um, yeah. probably around two hundred and fifty thousand right yeah. now. Two hundred fifty thousand Sin dollars, Singapore yes. dollars, by the way. Yeah. So they, I think for that, some of them who have their higher income, like they are able to afford it, the BMW, mm-hmm. because their housing is really on the cheaper end. Like yeah. they're not paying that and much for the housing. Uh, subsidized by the government. Right. So rentals and the initial cost price of the house already um, saved them quite a bit, I would say. Yeah. But uh, obviously a BMW is a luxury in terms of transport. Yeah. So uh, I guess the better comparison or the better view would be those people who are living in um three room or two room flats mm-hmm. and um are having just a standard car to get to point A to point B. You know, yeah. not saying that Which they is, probably can't afford yeah BMW, but that is a more sane concept of getting a car. It's a yes. necessity. Which is just to point out, like if you're not from Singapore, the public transport here is it's good, it's superb. Yeah. It's okay, good is an understatement. <laughs> yeah, it is like the best in the world. Yeah, I mean, I mean if you exclude Japan. I mean, okay, to be fair, uh, I've been to, uh, at least I've been to Japan. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've been to NYC and I've been to UK, right? Yeah. So I, I guess I could draw a slightly fair comparison between All right, these three. Go ahead and draw right. it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so um, yeah, one second. <laughs> no, uh, but uh, NYC Subway, right? NYC Subway are <coughs> atrocious. They are dirty. They are they smell bad, and um, it's it's just generally the infrastructure on New York City's um subway and system. It's not on time. Okay, on timeness is um I would say fifty fifty. Yeah. All right. It, that's not good. Yeah. <laughs> on time rating fifty percent. But yeah, in in general, uh, New York City subway as the media portrays, it's not the best in the world. It's pretty obvious. Uh, like I said before, smelly, dirty. Um, not on time. And the whole infrastructure is lacking, I would say. Mm. Like, the definition of a station is lacking, yeah. right? And uh, in Japan, um, it's expensive. That's for one. It's actually much more expensive than Singapore mm-hmm. by a mile. But um, on timeness, oof. They, they never get a second wrong, by the way. 
yeah. it never get they, they, there's a lot of news articles really about it like oh a Japan company Japan train company apologizes for leaving half a second too early <sighs> like come on we get like two minutes late and we yeah. are like complaining yeah. they, they, they get half a second and they apologize yeah we are complaining but they yeah. apologize <laughs> yeah so the point being made with this is that even the cheapest of car is a luxury LC. yeah yeah public transport it, you don't necessarily need a car in Singapore like mm-hmm. you can get by with public transport 100% for sure yeah it's accessible to that extent even mm. our taxis are not that expensive compared to Japan at least yeah Japan has freakishly expensive taxis mm-hmm. but ours is affordable at least you yes. know so car is a luxury in general yeah in generalizing cars uh, in sing- cars in Singapore is a luxury in general uh yeah, and if you're asking about how most people afford it, it's normally through loans mm-hmm. and normally through um bad financial decision, like you mentioned yeah, before like mentioned the podcast off, started. Like I mentioned off camera. Yeah, yeah, because, bringing it on camera. Yeah, now I'm bringing it on camera. That I I had a friend who um has a car. Had a friend. Has have 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 have. Okay. He's still my friend. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> but um, he he does have a car. He owns a car, but I he only earns I think two point eight. Okay, two thousand eight hundred dollars a month. So he basically loaned. He basically bought the Mitsubishi Atrage that I was mentioning. Um, he loaned it a ninety percent loan. Oh, by the way, okay. yeah. So, I mean, honestly speaking, <coughs> to really own a car in Singapore, even the lowest one, I believe that you should at least earn around four to five thousand. Yeah. To be able to comfortably pay off the yeah. installments. Yes. And on top of that, the down payment. Yeah, and speaking on this, like it's more of. Is it really worth the money? Is it necessary? Because I did the calculations myself, right? Mm-hmm. I live in quite a secluded area. Right. The nearest public transport is like a 2km walk away, whether right, right. it's bus or the train. And so I, I take Uber, I guess you call it Uber. For us in Southeast Asia, it's Grab yeah, or I Gojek. Take, I take Grab, yeah. Gojek a lot. And I see my expenditure in a month. So for someone who takes it a lot, I basically live alone. If I were to include my family members, it w- we would spend less than a thousand a month in total, right? Which is less than the, which is less than how much you pay on interest for the like cheapest car. Yeah, I would get. say per month you pay much lesser, but yeah, I think it comes down to convenience. And that's excluding. I think that's excluding like petrol and everything. Yeah, yeah, but oh yeah, then again, uh, because, sorry, I personally don't own a car. Uh, yeah. on my, under my own name at least but I, I do drive one uh, my parents one uh, and um, I, I am aware of the cost that mm-hmm. they take up and the I guess the maintenance on it like fuel yeah. cash um, the cash card sorry cash card and ERPs are our road taxes mm-hmm. effectively a road tax yeah. another form of road tax um, it, it's true that the cost does not out, the cost does not um, I would say surpass no, the cost surpasses fully yeah. of what you take off a cab. Yeah. But the convenience factor is there. And uh, obviously for cabs, there's a limitation on the size of the car. So in the event that you do go out to buy stuff, um, it's harder to say to access to access a car. And let's say, uh, by harder to access a car, I mean like you're unable to pack a lot of things, especially if you have a small car. Mm. Like your cabs are limited in boot space. Yeah. But uh, the convenience factor in there comes when you're waiting for one. You're wasting quite a bit of time for one. Yeah. Um. At least the safety of the car is to your own standards. Like you know how safe the car yeah. is, and you are um you you trust your own driving skills. Yeah, I think it just depends on what you value. And yeah. Like I genuinely con- do not trust yeah. caps. Yeah. No. Like you said, there's convenience of the car, but yeah. there's convenience of, uh, all these uh. Uh, right hailing apps yeah yeah for sure because with a car you have to remember that um, you need to park yes you need to find a place exactly. to park with the right hailing you can just drop off and just exactly screw it. which was the point I was gonna bring up yeah like yeah. if I were to go to mall A and mall B is like 2km away I just right. have to walk there yeah. if I want to go back I have to walk 2km back to my car where if I was like hailing for a ride home I could right. have just like stayed where I was and just like, right, have right. them come to me but I guess then again um it really Yeah. So if you don't have like three family members who uses the car a lot. Yeah. It's technically a waste of money. Yes. Yeah. It is cheaper to hail for rights. Yeah, yeah. It is way cheaper to hail for rights. I mean on the on the immediate look on the phone maybe, you'll be thinking like, Oh wow, it's really expensive. Yeah, but you have to add it up, calculate. Yeah. 
I think a lot of people don't do this calculation. Yeah, I mean, worst case scenario, you could just take the bus or the train. Yeah, you know? like it's not that the expensive. car is just. I would say it's a flex. Uh, it's okay. It's a flex for yeah. many. For me, it's technically a necessity. Yeah. I mean, sure. Well, to a certain extent, <laughs> it's a necessity. No, at but least. if if your family already owns a car, sure. Yeah, yeah. If your family different. already owns a car, it's different. Uh, because yeah. you're not I mean, paying additional. Then again, grass is always green on the other side, right? Yeah. You, you yeah, could yeah. you you could be you could have a car, and it really justifies your means. Like yeah. every day. Yeah. Or maybe almost every hour you're at least driving to somewhere. Yeah. Fine. You know you can't really afford that time with a taxi, right? Yeah. You can't really afford that time with a cab. So a car is necessary to expect. Alright, so let's yeah. okay, let's answer the topic. Are they so car is basically is it something where a lot of people are paying or spending beyond their means to impress others? Uh I would say no. Really? Yeah. Majority. Uh majority, okay. Majority of the cars in Singapore are not impressive. Fair to 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 be okay, fair, you know they fair. are yeah. To be fair, they are not um they are not driving it to impress, because yeah. they they believe on their own rights that they need the car. Yeah, they, it is a necessity. What I believe that if you're driving to impress is you're driving an M five or BMW M five or sports car, fancy mm-hmm. sports cars. That's when I will say yeah, you're driving to impress. And if you're financially not in a great situation, you are definitely being stupid right now. Yes. All right. Uh, it's a different story for um owners who have a Rolls Royce. <laughs> Those I guys mean, are just yeah, uh, if you can afford that, yeah, I mean, it's a different story. I'm, but I'm just by bowing down to you at this point. Yeah. Okay. So, since you're talking about uh impressing others, right? Mm. Uh, let's talk about uh luxury branded goods versus yeah, like common, common standard goods. goods. Yeah. Yeah. What well, I mean, it, it's All a right, pretty so kind of if obvious. You, if you want an now. example, this would be. <laughs> <laughs> this this good. would be one of them, and if and you want, this they, would be a common good, right? See, <laughs> we are the exact like. Okay, it turns out we are polar opposites on different things. On cars, we'll be like, you don't need a car, I I need a car. <laughs> and then now, Brenda goes, like, I don't need good clothes, but you 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 like good clothes. Uh, okay. Yeah. Let's, let me just explain a little bit. It is not that a car is. Okay, I guess it could be said that it is unnecessary for me. Mm-hmm. Because budget wise It is so much cheaper For me to just like Call and grab Uber Everywhere I go Right me. But for you Your family already owns a car Yeah yeah The only fair. thing you're paying for Is petrol And ERP Which is and cash card. cheaper yeah. Than if you were to grab Everywhere you go <laughs> Well So we are doing What is financially wise Based on our current situation Right yeah Yeah That's, that's a fair yeah. Evaluation Exactly and So branded versus common goods <laughs> 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 Okay I'd like to point out Uh I do enjoy uh branded goods. Right. They are definitely do. of yeah. a higher quality. Right. But the price is not justified in the sense that maybe what I wear is ten times better than what you're wearing, but the price is thirty times more. Yeah. Like it is not justified in that sense, right? Yeah, yeah. That's a fair Which is why this was bought on a huge, huge, huge major discount. He's trying to save his ass right now. <laughs> <laughs> no, like, I, I have to admit, I do enjoy such items. Right. I, I also have to admit that... And the quality is better. Yeah, it's definitely there. The quality for sure is different. Yeah. But, yeah, like, like he's, like, it's unmentioned. Yeah. You, you don't really... You can't really justify so yes. much sometimes, you know. Yeah. There are certain things where... Uh, or there's certain clothing, or yeah. branded stuff, where you you'll find it, like... You know, I don't really need to spend that much, do I? <laughs> for yeah, I like. I just want to point out that any branded item I own is all bought on discount. And any brand that I own, if you see any at least, is all also bought gifts. on discount. Yeah, gifts or discounts. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think we mentioned in episode one or episode zero, we don't really go out of our way to buy clothes yeah. in the first place. My dad buys my stuff for me. This yeah. is one of the few pieces that I buy on my own clothes. Yeah. And if I do buy it myself, this this is what I buy. My parents will actually buy something much more nicer <laughs> for me. Yeah. <laughs> but I don't really like to wear it, so I just buy I just wear this uh mm-hmm. these types of clothes for so, me anyway. Yeah, do okay. Since like I like we said many times, we cannot talk about Singapore as a whole, your yeah. friends. Do your friends uh spend beyond their means hmm. to purchase for because for me, this is not something I'm sp- spending beyond my means to buy, right? Right, right, right. I don't shop Definitely. often at all. Yeah. Like when's the last time I bought something? It's like I have no idea. Exactly. It's <laughs> that's how like infrequent, if that's a word. Right, right. That 
rare, I guess. How yeah. rare I buy items. Right. Yeah. I guess if you are if you're comparing um our pool of friends, or at least our friends. Yeah. Or at least my friends and yours, um mine I would say that they are spending within their means. They know their own limitations, I would say. Mm-hmm. But uh then again I have some friends who are obviously spending daddy's cash <laughs> and daddy's money. Yeah, <sighs> uh, that's uh that's um I I I can't give a fair comparison for that, I guess. Like they know that they are spending they're not spending their own money. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I mean if their family can afford it, like who are we to judge them? Yeah, that's true, but still you don't simply say, Yeah, that I can buy it. Yeah. You know, you, that's you, true. you physically can't buy it. Yeah. Yeah. You do not have the power to buy it on your own. Uh-huh. You have the power with the aid of someone else to buy it for you. Yeah. You know? So I, I guess um in relativity, uh not in relativity, in general, my friends yeah. are all saying Interesting. Um, yeah, yeah, they have seen financial I decisions. Because for some, for me, some of my friends, uh-huh. uh, okay, I would, you know what? I'm not gonna describe where I met these friends. Otherwise, <laughs> I don't really have a lot of group of friends that they would know. Yeah. But if I'm not talking about you, you should know that I'm not talking about you. <laughs> and if I'm talking about you, I hope that you don't know <laughs> that I'm talking <laughs> about you. <laughs> All right, go on. Yeah, but there are some people who, I would say, yeah, they would buy things beyond their means just to impress. Uh, right. Like just to sort of feel better about themselves. Right, right. Like they put their, they value their worth with what they wear. They value their face image, I would say. Yeah. yeah. Even though like it might not be smart to spend right, right. I, I do money that way. Like, hmm. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Actually for, for that, right, there is a slight comparison that I would probably compare to Indonesia. Sorry if I'm generalizing all Indonesians, my bad. But it's from what I've seen uh, from where I stay, at least in Indonesia. I think Indonesians, or at least um, people from Jakarta, for me at least, yeah. uh, they do um, value uh, image, I guess, mm-hmm. your, your personal image and your personal status yeah. way more than your income. Yeah. Yeah. So... Because like, that's not income is not something they can see. Yeah, income is not something they can see. Or but not outrightly see. Yeah, if you but, cannot, but uh, the issue with Indonesia, I think, is because they so um, heavily rely on image, like your yeah. own image, right? I think, I think that's the case everywhere. Yeah, but I, I think it's more obvious in Indonesia. Yeah, because for me, uh, although I own like you know this hoodie, but I think, as you know, I'm not a person who is very into luxury, like watches, cars, or anything. Right. But if I were to buy a car, if I were to buy a watch, I would go for a really nice one just for the image. Right, right. That's fair. Like when you meet someone or right, like when you, you have a meeting with someone new for, you know, like business purposes or whatnot. Right, right. You have to like portray a certain... <sighs> a certain image We are talking yourself. about this like quite seriously. No, but I mean the term not, I was gonna not, use was vibes. Vibes. <laughs> <laughs> like, That's why it's I say a vibe. It's like you have to portray a good image, a good first impression. Like you have to get a good vibe, man. Yeah. <laughs> it's like why can't I think of a better word? That's it's why like, I say I'm like, it's like portray a certain vibe. <laughs> vibe. <laughs> so it goes to a meeting. You like my vibe? Yeah. Your vibe. <laughs> but you get what I'm trying to yeah, say. Yeah, yeah, I definitely do. Uh, but really I, I think the issue here is that you are technically able to afford these luxuries. Yeah. Right? Um, I guess with a level of comfort, a certain degree yeah, of comfort. Yeah, yeah. But uh, to draw a comparison with Indonesia is that um, I think they have this culture of um, basically paying everything in installments. Oh. Yeah. So it, it comes to a point where uh yeah I mean I I'm sure some of guys some of you guys have seen probably some TikToks that yeah. um explains rich very rich right yes. this kind of ah, yes yes I yeah the that. minor yeah the minor differences and like when I watch the TikTok I think to myself I did not know I was very rich wow <laughs> because wow. like that I would look say at, th- look I, at this guy <laughs> okay I would say it's the same for you I think how we act uh we would uh relate uh, more to the very rich. But it's right. like I didn't know I'm very rich. I don't. I don't like flaunting yeah. things that I do have. But no, no. But it's like, oh, I see. So I'm very rich. Right. But it's probably where is my money. <laughs> and it's probably down to our personalities as well. Yeah. Yeah. But then, uh, all right. Um, <laughs> driving back again. Uh, people in Jakarta, at least, um, they spend a lot of. They spend definitely beyond their means yes. because they are putting installments on. Yeah. It's the first time I learned it when uh, when I bought a shoe there. Like I think my cousins or my dad told me that mm-hmm. they just. I'm just wondering how they could constantly buy so many uh, shoes. Yeah. Uh, and then my dad this. was like, uh, "I want 33 installments." <laughs> Thank no, you. They they start off then immediately. My dad just told me like installments. I'm like on a shoe. Yeah, it's, like what? It's two hundred bucks. Okay, an ultra boost. Uh, an ultra boost. Uh, Adidas ultra yeah. boost in Singapore will cost you around two hundred forty yeah. bucks. Okay. Yeah. So on this topic, I can't speak for anyone else, but I can speak for you and me. 
the only thing we'll ever pay an installment for is a house or a car. Right. Because we are literally unable to pay cash for it. Yeah. And speaking of that, there's another sort of like trigger point for me. Installments? Where, yes, installments. Uh-huh. Installments is actually... Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I would say installments slash uh, leveraging in when you're investing and whatnot. Right. It's a very trigger ring topic. Can for we me. just put a disclaimer? Not financial advice. Oh, actually, it is. Are you sure? Yes, I am right. confident in this. So Remove that disclaimer of financial advice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, okay, let's just talk about installments because that was what we were first talking about. Right, yeah. So, installments, most of the time, comes with interest, right? Mm-hmm. Which, okay, like, it's fine. I mean, at that point in time, that is just, like, a stupid, stupid move. It is financially dumb. Yeah, considering the interest that yes, comes with it. Yes, because you're yeah. paying more than what you can pay if you pay on cash, right? Yes. However, if it's an installment with no interest, actually paying with installment is a lot smarter of a thing to do. Yeah, right, definitely. Because if you are smart with that money, you the money that you're supposed to pay off at a future date, you could use that money... To reinvest to, into others, yes, right? Yeah. and earn more than that. Right. So you're effectively sort of paying less, I guess, if you want to put it that way, for that good. In general, uh, yes. after calculations, yes. you're not really paying less. Effectively, yeah. effectively. Effectively, you're paying less. Yeah. yeah, because you're earning more money with that than what, right. you, are, than what you have to pay back. Right, right. And this is where it touches on leveraging. Right. So leveraging is where you, for example, you work with a broker, you put in, let's say, $5,000. Uh-huh, yeah. And the leverage they give you may be five times, right? So mm-hmm. you have like $25,000 to play with in the market. Right. A lot of people when they leverage, they put 5,000 in, but uh-huh. that is all they have in their bank. Right, right. That's so whatever they lose, they'll start to be in debt. Right, yeah. Which is like a really, really stupid thing to do. And yeah. this caused a lot of people to treat leveraging as a really bad thing to do. Yeah. But in theory, it Yeah, isn't. but actually, it isn't. Yeah. Why? Because you don't for risk, someone... Yeah. You don't risk money that you're not willing to lose in the exactly. first place. Exactly. And yeah. especially if you go in debt, if you were to lose that money. Yeah. But if you're someone with that money in your bank mm-hmm. leveraging just makes your life easier like you right. don't have to put the whole like 25,000 which you want to trade with right right you can just put in 5,000 the 20,000 you can like I said you can use on other investment or do other things with right. it yeah. to make more money yeah so basically money in your cash is actually like a damn good thing yeah but just because of how irresponsibly irresponsibly people use these systems it has such a bad rep right and it's not only such a bad rep I guess they uh, um yeah. Man, this is generalizing again. Uh, yeah. in in uh, for people who do spend a lot, and personally, my friends who do spend on let's say who not spend invest on crypto and um, yeah. say maybe rates, right? Yeah. Like I I do tell them that generally it's a gamble. Effectively, yeah. trading is a gamble yeah. to a certain extent, right? Yeah. If you're not willing to lose, um, if you're not willing to lose the amount of money, yes. I don't think you should uh, invest in the first place. Yeah. Invest in uh in crypto at yes. least. And to you can p- invest in ETFs. They're yeah. relatively safe. Yeah. Yeah. Or like S&P 500, things yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those, those are safe options yeah. to invest money, you know. To people like your friend who, uh, if they don't do a lot of studying on the market, I always tell them, just go to a casino, put the roulette table, put everything you want to invest on black and yeah. pray. <laughs> yeah, that, that's a, that's, that a good, that's a good analogy. Yeah, that's a good analogy. That as is well, more though. effective and faster if you were to do that. Yeah. You don't waste time in the market, half studying, half not giving a shit. <laughs> you just put it in. Fuck it. Exactly, and it's fast. You know your result. <laughs> we are not. Oh shit! <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> we are not advocating gambling. By the way, yeah, <laughs> we, and we okay, absolutely do not advocate and gambling. Beca- on this point, right? Actually, I think a lot of people who are not financially educated are unaware of this, because I have a lot of friends who ask me about buying house and everything and why mm. paying a small sum of down payment is better than paying uh, a large sum of down payment yes yeah I, and but getting I think, a bigger loan yeah I think it really because they don't understand what to do with that money right yeah that's an issue yeah that's the main issue first like yeah. most of us like uh, my parents I think when they would say um, why I mean if you could pay like car loans in Singapore the interest are relatively fixed Yes. So in general, you would want to pay for a higher down payment exactly. so that you don't pay so much of interest with the loan, right? Yeah. But for housing, it's a way different story yeah. because it's a big one, a bigger sum yes. of money. And like I said, the most important thing is that money can be used elsewhere right, to generate sure. more money. Yeah. So, so this is one part where, yeah, very triggering. A lot, of people, a lot of people are not 
they don't understand this. Yeah, and uh, driving back to the issue in Jakarta is that they, th- those people are spending installments on items that are r- below a thousand dollars. Yeah, you know? exactly. Like, in general, all this, um, I would say our podcast equipment. I personally did break an installment for it, huh? but yeah, yeah, but it's zero percent. Oh, and there's oh yeah, no add-on. That's yeah, that's the thing. Like, Wait, I wouldn't. Then where is my share of the installment? Why did I give you full cash? <laughs> I mean, oh, you, fa- you get you get full cash for other things, but they, but it was all total. Yeah, yeah. Calculated no, in just, total I'm value. Just messing around. <laughs> it was all total calculated in total value because um I do have spending and savings. Yeah. Right. I'm not gonna tap into savings for this. Yes. Honestly speaking, this this yeah. will count all everything under spendings really. Yeah. But like I said, I only spend it. I only do it. Because yeah. there's zero percent. Yeah. There it's it's not worth if I'm paying an extra two percent every yeah. single month yeah. for an installment. Like if you take away nothing from this episode of the podcast, take away this. Yeah. Calculate your interest, how much you're paying in interest and what you can do with that money. Right. If you have to take if you really like something, just like, you know, save yeah, until just you can pay it at once. Yes. Or, or if you can't you're paying less overall. Yeah, or if you can't like um decide if this is necessary for you. Uh, like mark the item sit on it for a couple of months if yeah. after a couple of months exactly. you still need it you need it yeah like stop that, paying interest general. from like for like unnecessary reasons yeah. like oh the one thing that is really triggering people who argue with me over phone prices I, I think oh, you and me yeah both. That, that is exactly the yeah. same thing I was talking about I think, interest but, but I think this one would be the more um the more relatable one. Yeah. Like in Singapore at least. So All right, sure. Let's talk about it. Yeah. For Singaporeans, uh, not for Singaporeans, for people who are viewing outside, I'm not sure if it applies to other countries as well. I think it well. does. Yeah. I mean, it's basically installment. Yeah. But I think, let's just put it into context, <laughs> I guess, for them, just so that in case it's different. Yeah. Okay. So, okay. Why this is a recently triggering topic is because I myself bought uh, an iPhone 13 Pro. Yes. Uh, <laughs> iPhone 13 Pro, right? It's Max. about... <laughs> Let's put a Max in it. there. <laughs> it's about like $2,000. Right. And I have a few other friends who are buying it as well. So, you know, uh, as our culture goes, we have to flex it on Instagram. Right, right. So I posted it. And my friend was asking, why do you pay full price? It's so much cheaper if you were to sign a contract with a telco and pay monthly. <laughs> I can feel, I can feel <laughs> myself boiling. Calm down, calm down. Oh, I can feel myself boiling. So, <laughs> and in my head, it's like, are you not calculating the prices that you're paying in total for that two years of contract? Right. Like if you multiply it by the 24 months, you're literally paying like at least two hundred dollars more. No, eight hundred. I think it's it depends on the okay, depends I didn't on the plan. Uh, depends yeah. on the plan. Yeah. And like they were saying, Oh no, but this is because uh you are paying for the Telco services as well. Right. But the thing is I pay for my phone and I pay for my Telco services, I pay about like twenty dollars a month. Right, right. Even the, with yeah. this included, when mm-hmm. you sign the contract, you pay for the phone and the telco service in installments monthly, right? You're paying still more, like a few hundred dollars yeah. more. And like and they're still arguing with the Can fact you not that multiply? <laughs> can you Do math? you not know Patmos or yeah. whatever you, it is? Patmos for us. Yeah. Yeah. Like, do you do you not math? <laughs> like in in I, I, I don't understand why they decide to and they feel like they are more superior in a way. I've no idea why. You're one okay, one, you are bounded to the telco for two years. Yeah. You're unable to change any plans for the two years exactly. unless you pay a penalty. Yeah. All right. I am uh, effectively in the end of the two years yeah. spending lesser and I have the freedom to change to a cheaper plan if yeah. I want to. So I, I don't really see why they decide to uh, flex yeah. it on us. It's like the f- yeah. Like <laughs> the first person I explained, I was like, okay, and they still don't get it. I'm like Okay, the second person said, why are you paying one shot? It's more expensive. I just said, okay. <laughs> like, sorry, I'm stupid. Yeah, at, at this rate, okay, we understand that paying on... Uh, what, what do we understand? No, we as understand in, that you're wrong? No, no, as in like, <laughs> as in we get it. Paying one shot is expensive now, yes. right? But if you look at the long term... Like how much you're paying in total. Yeah, it is not. <laughs> it's exactly. in fact way cheaper. And those people who got their phones off a $0 contract, Man, you are paying an exorbitant amount for your contract itself. Like per yeah. month, you are paying like eighty to one hundred dollars. That's crazy. Effectively, over twenty four months, you are paying two thousand four hundred. It costs so much more. Yeah. So I I don't I really don't see why they like to strike up an argument with us when the the math the math is there. Yeah. Like the values are the numbers are there. Yeah. You don't have the money to spend two thousand dollars now. Exactly. Don't. This is not philosophy. This is math. Yeah. There is a right answer to this, and yeah. yours is not. Yeah. And. In fact, if you're unable to pay for the phone, let's say the iPhone, right? Yeah. Um, full price, immediately yeah. on the spot. Freaking Apple provides a 24 months, a 0%, like, like yeah, exactly. 0% fee for you to pay yeah. like monthly. Just do that. Just do that. That's It's still way cheaper anyway. Exactly. <laughs> you're paying the price of the phone with no installment fee. 
Yeah, I don't like, understand. I, I don't, I don't, and then, uh, oh, some of them, you know what they say? But I can trade in. Oh, and I heard that. I want to bang my head into the freaking wall, guys. Bang your head? I would like to jump, my friend. Like, trading in your phone after probably a year, if you never put in the consideration that the phone devalues after a year. No, that's not even the uh, thing. You know what the thing that irks me the most is? Irks, wow, I don't use that word often. <laughs> <laughs> you know what irks me is that when you trade in, for example, uh, I have an old iPhone ten here, right? Uh-huh. If I were to trade in, it would uh, get me, I think, two three hundred dollars. Nothing now, actually. You know what is the triggering thing? What? On the second hand market, you can sell it for like four to five hundred dollars. Oh right, like, right, right. Come on, guys! Like, <laughs> you can, as you can tell, it's getting a little bit passionate right there for my audio meter. Like, <laughs> you just sell it in the second hand market, you're getting double. Yeah, you, you just make me want to neck myself. Trading in is a fast way to get like, the discount. Jesus. Yeah. Like, I... Oh, my oh. days. Oh. <laughs> we are getting, like, headaches right now. I, I I, do not have high blood pressure. My family does have a history of it, and I'm pretty sure I'm going to get it in the next five minutes if you continue <laughs> again. I shouldn't have brought this up in the first place because I feel like I'm about to die. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right? I feel like my organs are internally failing okay, right now. Okay, but you know what? The positive thing is you'll never have to go through this conversation again. We'll I, just link them to this I, episode. I hope I don't. <laughs> Because for God's sake, my days, I cannot yeah. do as, this again. Yeah, as you can see, we are very passionate. I'm, I'm, I'm genuinely glad that yeah. most of my friends know that know that it's cheaper yeah. at the end of the two years. Yeah. Okay. I'm genuinely happy and I love you guys for it. Yeah. You know, honestly, I'm glad you brought this in. It drives in the point that I was like talking about. Oh, but I'm dying though. Is it worth it? <laughs> <laughs> I'm physically dying though. Yeah. Oh uh, man. <laughs> yeah, money guys. Yeah, money be man. Financially literate. Oh, sane at least. Come yeah. on. At least calculate through the time period. Yeah, just at the like bare minimum. multiply by 24. You learn that in like primary six. Yeah, at the bare minimum, please just just think. <laughs> yeah. And with that being said, that uh, wraps up almost today's um that, today's episode yeah. actually. Yeah, that'll be the end of today's episode. Yeah. Oh my god. Uh, okay, remember to boiling. subscribe, to like, turn on the notifications. Oh. Uh, yeah, uh, our social medias are in the description wherever you're listening or watching. If you're on YouTube, description, Spotify, Apple Podcast, description. <laughs> description, description, description. Description, description. Yeah. Follow, follow, follow. And to make it easier, at least for our audio listeners, um, we didn't mention this before, but uh, audio listeners, you can catch Instagram and Twitter at Instagram for both. And for our personal um, our personal socials, at least, um, it's a little bit um, harder to catch on audio at least oh uh, yeah us. we'll just link it yeah, in we'll, the we'll sashimi just, tangent yeah we'll just put it head in, over to there yeah we'll just put it in all the descriptions of the podcast so you can at least yeah. find it you know at okay least. you know what if you have, if you follow us through the podcast drop a DM and let us know honestly I think that would be interesting yeah. I want to see where you guys are from if you're not in Singapore yeah I mean I have mine mu- I yeah. still have okay, mine for, me then, for yeah. me then you can drop us a DM at our own uh, yeah. our sashimi tangent um, Instagram you can drop it us there, you know. It yeah. gen- genuinely, we, we actually want to know where you guys are listening yeah. from. And we also genuinely appreciate more topics as well. And yeah. any feedbacks on the podcast on its own. Yes. Yeah. Also, since this is a back-to-back recording from the previous episode, I don't know where the orientation of next episode is and subscribe here is. So I'm just going to point here. <laughs> he, he is making my job <laughs> significantly harder, by the way. Yeah. Because I have to edit this. But uh, oh, previous episode here. Oh, for fuck's sake, please here. don't do that. Please yeah. don't. Uh, All right, thank you. I am not uh, going to do it. But uh, good. No, goodbye, guys. See you yeah. in the next episode. I hope. Yes. All right.